Ambrosia. He stared at me with silent blasphemy, as if he knew the choice he was about to make would change his life forever. His hair blown out, shades and dark features screamed Italian. Ecuadorian, 100%, he said. Must be the nose or my Mediterranean good looks. <laughs> he squinted his eyes and I was transfixed. I've always attained the attraction of men, but his confidence commanded mine. And he whispered sweet little nothings like copper tone or mahogany bliss. Every time we'd kiss. I thought it was sort of silly at first, but it secretly excited me. You see, James simply looked like a player. He walked with a silky smooth step that seemed to slide with each pace, caressing the ground, brush strokes from an unknown path. He exuded the personality of a man who could get anything he wanted. I often wondered if this was just something temporary for him, or if I would be able to captivate him like I had done so with so many men before. I longed for his mind, his heart. Nothing would get in my way. He paraded me everywhere we went and introduced me to everyone. All his friends were drawn to me. And like mist dissipating on glass, the lust would escape their eyes and desperately try to cling on. James never cared. They had their types, he would say. I think it was the way he held me. Club nights were the highlight of our relationship. He would dance with others, but he would always end the night with me. Our youths allowed the daily reincarnation, and we partied our lives away. He would bring me up with him atop the giant speakers. The lights, all of them, were there just for us. Flooding our eyes with illusion. The music, forcing our memories to linger and give birth to new ones. The liquor, mixing our ignorance with strangers. The feasting of debauchery. Fool's paradise, sex craze and hedonistic, lurking the New York underground with unabashed virility, chanting manhood incantations in hidden spots in trendy lounges, fizzled with techno lust euphoria. He would tell me things like I was always there for him, or that I relieved the pain. Of course I've heard all this before. Other men would throw themselves at me and use the excuse of being hurt so bad that they just wanted to escape. I provided this palatable freedom, their path to a new life. James seemed different, though. Always kept me guessing. During work, he'd make sure he saw me during his break. We'd meet in the parking lot and play our roles until it was time for him to go back. It was starting to get crazy. After a while, he'd be more interested in me than his job. It was the same thing with school. I'd even wait for him in his car, and he'd come and see me between classes for a quickie. He'd write to me at times. I was beginning to rely on him. One time we were at the beach staring out at Long Island on the horizon when he told me I was all he had left. I knew then that I had won, and the tears never stopped. It was beginning to get obsessive. There were even times that he would even stop talking about his ex and start paying more attention to me. I loved it. Whether indirectly or not, I was the catalyst that made him lose his job, stop going to school, his love, even almost lost his thumb. There had been a time when he was fighting with his ex. She was driving him to a friend's house when he told her to pull over under the bridge. He mentioned how much he cared for me and she flipped. They argued and as she pulled his hand, he pulled forth and hit it against the door, cutting his thumb. His writing instrument was forever maimed, he'd say. Loss can make a man react in very strange ways. He was a good man and while everyone always told him they liked him better while he was with me, I knew it wasn't going to last. The words were our undoing. He began writing again. Something about the words mesmerized him. He began to write feverishly about everything, creating poems of lost love, deception, and even an entire poem about his thumb. He would write at a frantic pace and even started reading the Bible again. There wasn't enough time for me anymore. I would see him less and less. He couldn't go a day without being with me, and now he'd even let two weeks go by without paying me a visit. It had been more than four years since we met, and now I heard that he was going back to school. He's changed completely. I rarely see him now, and when I do, it's never the same. It seems he's really become a different person. I think I'm glad for him. We were never meant to be, and there will be many men that I've yet to conquer anyway. My taste is too irresistible, and I will hypnotize your palate. 
sometimes harsh when I go down on you, the fire will burn us both. Warm and leathery, fermented tears, flaunting aftertaste unleashes your inner confidence. I am the ambrosia, the immortality of your sensations. You have been transformed. Men melt at my feet and are always willing to open up and let me in. Everyone seems to call me different things. My given name is Hennessy. I prefer to think of myself as the cognac of endless miseries.